a radical heist. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. It happened back in 1981, but it remains, as you said, one of the most notorious crimes that many can remember. Clark served 37 years in prison in the botched Brinks heist that resulted in the death of two Nyack police officers, Sergeant Edward O'Grady and Officer Waverly Brown, and a Brinks security guard, Peter Page, was also killed. Now, while Clark didn't pull a trigger, she was charged with second-degree murder and robbery. She was part of a radical leftist group and was defiant during her trial where she was convicted and sentenced to 75 years to life in prison. In prison, Clark became a model prisoner. Her sentence was commuted to 35 years by Governor Cuomo in 2016, making her eligible for parole. In 2017, the parole board voted to keep her in prison, but now word of her impending release The move is still adamantly opposed by law enforcement groups. In a statement, the actor in Rockland County DA Kevin Galise said, Judith Clark is a cold-blooded cop killer who chose to participate in a bank robbery, anarchy, and murder that left three people dead. Because of her complete disregard for human life and the sheer brutality of the crime, parole should never have been granted. October 20th, 1981, the Brinks robbery of 1981. Wow. Now, you might have been confused. What about the Brinks robbery of 1950 in Boston? Not that one. The reason this one is very exciting to me, my brother introduced me to this one because mm-hmm. he knows how much I love things that I connect to on a locale mm-hmm. basis. And this takes place in Nanuet, New York. And I'm going to give you a little frame of reference where Nanuet, New York is. There's Rockland County where Nanuet is, and Mm -hmm. then there's Westchester County, and then there's New York City. Okay. And I grew up in Orange County. Okay. I went to community college. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to brag that I went to college, throw it in your face. (laughs) Yeah. That I went to many community colleges. That's why when I speak about things, I have such an authority because Mm -hmm. I've gone to many community colleges. Yeah, you're a connoisseur of community colleges. Orange Community College, Rockland Community College, where I went, and then there's Westchester, the New York City, just Mm -hmm. to give okay. you an idea of, of where we're at. I like it. I like it. And the Nanuet Mall is where this very infamous robbery took place involving a lot of deaths. Oof. It involves a lot of radical groups. Yikes. It's something that came to a boil. Ooh. Ooh. I like I like we do a lot of violent bank robberies we profile a lot of ones like that and they are very interesting in a lot of ways because things go wrong or because people's mindsets or like you know whatever seems to happen that goes from regular bank robbery to like intense bloodbath and i can't wait for this one and they always go wrong yeah they never go right they never go right (laughs) or would we be we 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 wouldn't wouldn't. be talking about we wouldn't be speaking of it there would be Nothing to speak about, and we've talked about the North Hollywood shootout, which mm-hmm. is extremely infamous. That's right. This one, unfortunately, had casualties, which is not the exciting part to me. I Mm-mm. don't love that part, Mm-mm. but it did It did happen, and it's a huge part of Rockland County and that area, mm-hmm. and there's a, a marker, a historical marker for it, so it's a That's pretty... Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty kind of revered thing because Mm -hmm. of what happened. 1981, I I love talking about the 70s and 80s. You know, 1981, you had uh, Ronald Reagan's in office. Yeah. You have a lot of uh, the economies, you know, picks up Mm -hmm. after that. But at that point, you know, not so great. You know, the Iran, uh, the uh, the, Iran, you know, the hostages um, was like a year before. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of give a little frame of reference what was going on in... 1981. Yes. MTV was about to pop off. It was about to video kill the radio star it so soon. How old were you then? Uh, I was in like my early 30s. (laughs) I only had one kid at that point. That's crazy. I watched MTV when it debuted and watched the first video on MTV when it debuted. Yeah. I I love that. MTV, for the first 20 years of its existence, was the coolest thing ever made. For me, the last three has been my favorite. The last three? You like a lot of X on the beach. Gotcha. Catfish. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Well, potato, potato. And you've seen a Brinks armored 
car around. Brinks is a pretty popular armored mm-hmm. car, transferring money from banks to mm-hmm. from stores to banks, probably going mostly in one direction. Mm-hmm. Nanny went mall, malls, 1981. Ooh. You know, I love talking about a nice mall, mall. culture. Yeah, we haven't yeah. talked about a lot of malls, and I'm I have a mall th- that I want to do, but I haven't mm-hmm. gotten all the information on it yet that I'm ready to do it, but I'm ready to go back to malls, which is Ooh. one of my favorite things. Yeah. Abandoned or otherwise, but you know, malls in Great. New York and New Jersey, Ugh. hot, baby. Oh, so fun. I just, whenever I think of a mall, I think of the, well, the malls that I grew up around, but just Phil Collins just being pumped in through, like in the air tonight, just being just constant, the smell of a Cinnabon um, or, or a pizza parlor and just, just hitting Hitting the stores, not even chain stores at this point, too. Especially like at that point, I yeah. imagine you're not going to get your lids or your Forever Twenty Ones. You're going to get those fun, yeah. like, like local, let's go and like, like, <laughs> exactly and fun gal, exactly and, some CD, not even CD stores, no. tape, tape town. stores. Sam Goody, baby. <gasps> Sam Goody was around in the eighties. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Would you think it really blossomed in like 2012? I thought well, <laughs> Sam Goody was all, all about CDs. And also it was kind of radio shacky in my neighborhood. Like they had a lot of like, like Walkman, like they had a lot of stuff for listening to music. Hmm. Interesting. What do I know? I'm only 75 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Okay. So on October 20th, 1981, a Brinks armored car pulled up to an entrance in the Nannywood Mall in the rear parking lot. Standard. They do it all the time, once a week mm-hmm. or whatever they, you know, pick up probably a lot of money. Yeah. One of the guards of the Brink truck was killed in the robbery attempt. Two other guards were severely wounded when the perpetrators opened fire with shotguns. God. Heavy, heavy. And the and, and the people involved, the perpetrators, are, are, you know, of course, a really interesting part of this and why it makes this so interesting and, like, sensational, but it, yeah. it does make it somewhat sensational uh, in a historic sense. Definitely. In an attempted escape from the scene of the robbery and murder, one of the vehicles bearing the perpetrators was stopped in a collision, and a second was stopped at a police roadblock. A third was successful in escaping. The occupants of the first vehicle were arrested. The occupants of the second vehicle opened fire on Nyack, New York Police. Nyack is, yeah. is right near there. At the roadblock and killed two policemen. Suspen, uh, the suspect then fled, although one of them was arrested and the stolen funds were recovered by the police the same day from the vehicles. And how much money was it? One point six million dollars. Whoa! I was thinking you were. Gonna, oh, that's. Ins- I I always think you're going to go the opposite. Where it was like, how much money was it? Forty seven dollars. And I was like, what? No, one point six. Million. Whoa. Just to give you an idea, like what that when we're discussing malls, the impact and and you know, money, even though 1981, yeah, it was economically depressed, but you know, malls were a very exciting thing at that yeah. time. People were spending money on various things, whether it be food or video games or whatever was happening. I and mean, it was then. also like a social hub, mm-hmm. really. Like you would have mall shows like Tiffany, like you'd have it'd be entertainment, it'd be commerce, it would be food, it would be Hanging out with different people at your, you know, class level and from your school. It was like a community center. And 1.6 million is is a lot. So a lot happened and, and the payoff would be would be big. Yeah. So I'm going to get to who was involved and that's important. And then there's also going to be an interesting thing about one of the guards that survived. Oof. A little later on. So oh. there's going to be a couple of things going on. Multiple levels. I got levels. very involved in this because, mm-hmm. you know, from 1981 up until I found 2016, mm-hmm. there's been information on this and it's a pretty, uh, I don't know, it's a pretty kind of vibrant, um, informative crime, especially in a place that I I went to that mall uh, yeah. like a whole bunch of times. I probably bought a cassette Mm-hmm. In the, the Nanuet Mall. Wow. Do you remember anything distinctly from the mall when you were there? Not really. I didn't no go to Collins? that mall uh, that much. And when I was, you we went to community college, it was like the early 90s ish. So it was kind mm-hmm. of past that. And in 1981, I was, no, I was, was still in New Jersey. I might have been uh, just moved to New York at that mm. point, too. So I didn't even know what it, I didn't even know what it was. Wow. I didn't even know what a podcast was back then. <laughs> Can you imagine no. our world without this? <laughs> so I'm going to go to a New York. Times article. Okay. From 1981. Because I was like, what What were the... 
in you know this is not a hindsight they're like here's us reporting on what's happening now as compared mm-hmm. to a 2016 article looking back mm-hmm. i feel like there's a little bit of well you have a lot of hindsight you yeah know? there's the way we speak about things the way we report on things changes but a new york times article quote the shooting stunned nyack a community of 8,000, about 25 miles north of manhattan mm-hmm. when a police officer blocking the door of the two-story red brick Police headquarters was asked the size of the department. He said it was 22, emphasizing was, then he shut the door. Well, Right? It's like a well, very... Yeah, uh, it's like, oh, someone has some opinions on this. Now, who did this? Who would do this? Who would have the chutzpah, can yeah, I say? audacity. Can, audacity? I mean, yeah, I like chutzpah because it's jew and that's our right. brand. I haven't used the word chutzpah in a while. Chutzpah, yeah. Uh, but I think that's a term the I cojones. would... The yeah. No? <laughs> um, let's go back to Audacity. Okay. You just, just stick to Audacity. I got it. You got it. So, you're familiar with the Black Panthers? Mm-hmm. So, a kind of, I say, a subsect of the Black Panthers. And, again, these groups I'm going to be referencing, I'm not an expert on. I'm obviously familiar with. I've gone down a bunch of rabbit holes. And there's kind of a lot going on at once. But I'm going to boil it down to the way that I know best to explain it. The Black Panthers had a kind of a subgroup that was a little more aggressive, I would say, and that was the Black Liberation Army. Mm -hmm. And here are the members that were involved. Gerald Wayne Williams, who went by Matulu Shakur. Yes. Tupac Shakur's stepfather. Damn. So there's kind of a connection later on to, you know, because obviously Tupac is a very celebrated... um, Tupac's obviously a very celebrated, you know, musician and artist and icon of that. But his stepfather was I'm one of these of people, and we'll even get to that even a little bit later. Donald Weems, who went by Kuwasi Balagoon, Samuel Brown, who went by Solomon Bonese, and Samuel Smith, who went by Matari Shabaka Suniata. You know, excuse my pronunciation of these. Edward Joseph and Celio Chewy Ferguson. And four former members of the Weather Underground. Oh. Huge left-wing, radical left-wing organization. You know, when mm-hmm. you talk about radical left-wings going back to the 1960s and the Democratic, Democratic National Convention and mm-hmm. all that. Um, and the Weather Underground, weather underground is another separate thing that we could probably get into uh, people doing a lot of bad stuff for what they claim was the right reason. Yeah. You know, I guess it depends on how you think about it. Blowing things, blowing stuff up and killing people, mm-hmm. not necessarily my jam. Mm-hmm. Even if I uh, understand the, you know, the kind of the, where it begins. Yeah. Where, where it comes from. Cause these groups are, you know, they're anti-racism anti-imperialism yeah and obviously very very radical yeah a lot of the weather underground are white Mm -hmm. black liberation army are black Black. and kind of uh working together and you know we discussed like the symbionese uh, symbionese liberation army and patty hurst there's just Mm -hmm. a lot of that that i'm super interested in yeah and we'll we'll kind of get into that but the uh members of the Weather Underground, now they had belonged to the May 19th Communist Organization. Mm -hmm. Again, another, just splinter groups all over the place. Maybe not agreeing with what's going on and maybe the Black Liberation Army and then Eldridge Cleaver Mm -hmm. would kind of, when things kind of changed power, things are always kind of changing power. Again, I'm not a huge expert, but um, there's just a lot. And then splinter groups happen. Mm -hmm. So that would be David Gilbert, Judith Alice Clark. Kathy Bowden and Marilyn Buck. Those mm-hmm. are the white people <laughs> names. White. Yeah, those Did you are get very that? white names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they check out yes. as white names. I mean, Judith Alice Clark, did anyone think back when she was in eighth grade that she was going to be a radical uh, kind of t- domestic terrorist, I guess, depending on how yeah. you... Probably not, but the name... No. <laughs> like Judith Alice no, Clark. No, Judith uh, went... She hung out in the library for lunch. Or had her lunch. But she was reading books about how to dismantle. Yeah, the patriarchy and the 
consumerist powers that be. Totally. And the Weather Underground uh, lasted from about 1969, 1977, and the um, Black Liberation Army lasted to about 1981, mm-hmm. where we're at right right now. So I think now is a pretty good time to uh, kind of uh, get put, to put down. Let's like put down the money. Put down the guns. And head to a mall kiosk. Yes. To get some hair products. Yes, and take a little break and play some and play some Pac-Man. Yeah. Working remotely can be a challenge, especially for teams that are new to it. How do you deal with your work environment being the same as home while staying connected and productive? And then there's your newest coworker, the cat. Well, your friends at Trello have been powering remote teams globally for almost a decade. At a time when teams must come together more than ever to solve big challenges, Trello's here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format, plus tons of features that make working with your team functional and just plain fun. Trello keeps everyone organized and on the same page, helping teams communicate, focus, and connect. Teams of all shapes and sizes at companies like Google, Fender, Costco, and likely your favorite neighborhood coffee shop all use Trello to collaborate and get work done. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Trello dot com. Hello, everyone. We're back. And I personally want to check in with all of you, see how we're all doing in quarantine. If you're not in quarantine, I don't know, something to think about. But uh, we are. All of Los Angeles is shut down, essentially, except for places like pharmacies and grocery stores. Essentially what the mayor was like, shut down all non-essential places. The thing is, I'm such a party animal, and mm-hmm. I'm always going to parties and nightclubs. Yeah, you are. You I are. always get bottle service, mm-hmm. and I get turned. Um, so it's been really, <laughs> particularly tough for me. Yeah, you can't. You gotta get turned down. Now I have to. Up. Now I just have to like edit podcasts. Yeah, now you, you have a bucket in your home that you put ice in, and you put a bottle in there for your own bottle service that your cat like hangs out around. Well, my cat's the doorman. And he never lets me in. <laughs> wow, he's fucking carding hard <laughs> these days. You're yeah. like, I'm a regular. And he's like, You're too don't old. even try it. He's like, I'm, 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 I'm above 21. They're like, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, You're way above. <laughs> exactly. What's going on here? Uh, way above 21. What do you think this is? Um, but but yeah. how's everyone doing? Are yes. you well? We're Message us. Out. Please yeah. do. We still if have to. care packages. We're going to send them out. Yeah, to. Uh, out. Well, they'll be out by the time you listen to this. But we're really happy about all of your positive responses. We're really, we're here for you. We want to engage with you if you need such a thing, which I know I do. I and if love- you want to, you can um, you can you know message on Instagram, mm-hmm. which is Ghost Town Pod, and mm-hmm. your Instagram is just Rebecca Lieb. Yeah, you go know, straight and, to the source, <laughs> right? Yeah, or um, the Jason Horton for me, in case mm-hmm. you just want to send one that is just for me or just for Rebecca. Probably more for just for Rebecca. I don't think anyone. <laughs> wants to know what's going on with me, but <laughs> what are you talking about? Ah, you know. What are you talking about? I want to know all the time what's yeah. happening with you. But uh, we did get a nice message from uh, Panda underscore four five two five. They gave us a story that we're not going to share yet because we're saving it for something special. But they said, "Hey guys, I just discovered your podcast. First impressions, I love it. Second impressions, don't who's do to it. say? Who's just, to say? Don't 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 listen to it. Yeah, no, that's it. We don't want it. That's all we need. That's all we need. So we're really happy again. We want to engage with you. We've gotten such incredible." Uh, feedback from some of you who are in quarantine who have reached out personally to our blog and our Instagram and we it's just it's very powerful it's really moving and we want to send you a little gift we did we got a nice message Mm -hmm. from the blog that found the podcast from the blog Mm -hmm. and uh, she was from Central America uh, She's from Central America, and she's studying in Albany, New York. Yeah, which is a, she's in personal connection. I've dated mm-hmm. some girls that ended up going to SUNY <laughs> Albany, and uh-huh. she was, you know, she's was getting going for a PhD program. Yeah, and her and, significant other was in a different country, yes. and she felt very isolated. Alone. And also, she was sick, which also sucks. Like whatever, yeah. you know, she was like, I haven't been tested. Like, who knows what this is? It must be a really hard and isolating thing. Always sending her a nice. Um, yeah, we send her a nice. Uh, Nice group of things. We have a couple things going out. Yeah. So I'm happy to do it for anyone else who needs it. It's part of our community service to you because we're we're saints and we're gods and and we're also very humble. Yeah. Also very grounded. And also, um, maybe do you think maybe we'd like someone to talk to? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to talk to another human being. (laughs) (laughs) Jason came in here desperate for For, content. Yeah. I mean, I just. Well, I mean, I kind of always live like that. You know. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. It really shows. I'm really enjoying it in a perverse way because I feel like I'm always very busy and it's nice to kind of make my life smaller. I'm moving soon, which is also a huge, gigantic headache. Um, obviously, under these circumstances, 
horrible circumstances. But yeah, I think a lot of people are like, you know, like hunkering down and and kind of living this way, especially us and freelancers. It's kind of a great equalizer because mm-hmm. it doesn't. Re- I mean, yes, obviously, listen, having more money is probably great, but everyone's in the same boat in whatever boat that is in, in context. Totally. So there's, I find a, like a little bit of comfort in that, but I, we hope everybody uh, is well. Yeah. Um, and, and keeps being well. I also had a thought as I was parking, I was like, why is parking so hard right now? I feel like after a while people might get a little more lax about this and we shouldn't. The fate of the coronavirus is in our hands. Um, and like how we react to it again, if we're, feeling unhinged especially or, a podcast you talking about this like we're talking about an episode something that's like you know almost 40 years ago mm-hmm. somebody's gonna be talking about this right now on yeah. a podcast and you can be like oh i remember where i was when that was happening exactly and, and it's crazy. in our hands too the fate of this virus and what happens with it it's it, it's in our actions which is very scary honestly so please be safe how are our mayors doing we need to keep our political structure. Mm-hmm. That's right. In, we've got intact. We've got Brandon Gaddis. We've got Chris Witt, and we have our newest mayor, and Barrett Brown. Yes, we, we want to make sure that they are healthy. Yes. Because what are we going to do without mayors? I don't know. The city will be lawless. I will embezzle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I and I I can't trust myself, so we need them there, and we um, need them hope, safe and healthy. We need hope they're well. Uh, got a nice message on Apple Podcast. Great. Please rate and review five stars if you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are there. I'll let you know. There's one where the title is just no. <laughs> not going to read that one. Mm. I love it though. I like the balls. Are they wrong? The chutzpah. Absolutely not. Huh? Um, oh, another title is pure dribble. <laughs> Great. Uh, are either of them wrong? Um, not probably not. But, but they took the time, and I appreciate time. that. But if you want to um, pad it with nice things, yeah, niceties, just, please. Yeah, just I don't we'll know. Send you a care package. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. It's happening. We will buy your love and affection. I'm down. I'm not above that. This one is from Miss Kaisa Therapist. Great Ooh. topics and great banter. Love the show. Top- topics are great, creepy, spooky. I love all the places I'd like to visit. I love the hosts as they feel like friends. And their banter <gasps> keeps me laughing. You both feel like friends I've never met. Thank you. And please keep doing what you are doing. And a little heart emoji. Oh. little heart emoji. That was nice. That was a, that was from your new friend. That's yeah, my new my new emergency contact. I need your phone number <laughs> because I need to put you down as an emergency contact. It's not for care packages, no it's for Jason's well being. Do you know what I did? Hmm. Um, I got a uh, Stitcher Premium. Oh, it's free for a month. So I was like, I'll do it. Uh-huh. I've never actually used it. I've had the well, the code is Ghost Town. If you get <gasps> Stitcher Premium, go to Ghost Town. You get it free for a month because I like. Mark Maron's WTF. Mm-hmm. But I really like going back to old episodes I don't have access to because mm-hmm. I, I like the era of Mark Maron during his kind of transition as somebody who's 10 years ago, he's my age now, mm-hmm. and how he kind of had a second act or third, I don't know what act yeah. it would be for him. So I like going back and there's just old episodes with like Bob Mould of Husker Du and mm-hmm. like just like really interesting – uh, people so I was like the only way I can get it is going to Stitcher Premium because they're all there and I don't know there's also no ads for a lot of them yeah I know you, everyone loves ads um, yeah, but if you the don't love them <laughs> is the ads but uh, Stitcher Premium and use the code Ghost Town and get a free month of Stitcher I actually used it I, I always talked about it but I never actually did it because mm-hmm. it's just I there was I never thought I was like well, what do I want to go back and listen to mm-hmm. and now Especially right now. Yeah. There's I'm, no better time to get some Stitcher Preems into your life. Yeah, for we, free. We got nothing but time, baby. Yeah. Get on it. So Speaking of time. Oh, I think it's time to um, get back into the mall. We Put on your scrunchie. Get, grab your crop tops. Yeah. Wear your, your mm-hmm. tight jeans. That's Look right. like you're in Stranger Things. That's right. Except not as good looking no. for me. Uh, or as young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's go back. To the go go back to Nanuet, New York, nineteen eighty one. So speaking on the Black Liberation Army, uh, the Black Liberation Army are on the way up, and the Black Panther Party are on the way out. And the newly formed Black Liberation Army believe that the character of reformism is based on an unprincipled class collaboration with our enemy. 
and asserted the following principles. One, that they were anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist, anti-racist, and Mm anti-sexist. Number two is that we must, of necessity, strive for the abolishment of these systems and for the institution of socialistic relationships in which black people have total and absolute control over their own destiny as a people. And number three, that in order to abolish our systems of oppression, we must utilize the science of class struggle, develop this science as it relates to our unique national condition. Sounds ideal. Yeah. How do you how do you sustain a fringe organization but money, right? You, you need, need that money. You need money. I, I don't know if you need 1.6 million or maybe they didn't, I, I, you know, didn't know how much they were going to get their hands on. When do the Brinks truck have the most money? Yeah. Well, do they do one pickup a week? Do they do one pickup every two weeks? Whatever that is, is that, you know, if they're not probably doing pickups every day. They're going to go when they have the most money and get the most bang for your buck. Yeah. Is that the best term? No, but. Oh uh, yeah. Probably not the best term, but we understand also 1 million in so, 1981. So I came up with four million five hundred fifty-three thousand one hundred eighty-eight dollars and twelve cents hmm. at the cumulative rate of inflation, which is one hundred eighty-four point six percent. So those that were arrested on that day were Catherine Bowden. Mm-hmm. She was a member of the Weather Other Ground and a fugitive since nineteen seventy. So she's been raising hell for quite a while. Samuel yeah. Brown, uh, no known political background, but record of arrest in New York City dating to nineteen fifty-eight. Judith mm-hmm. Alice Clark, a former member of the Weather Underground and current member of the MCO, that's a communist organization, mm-hmm. another fringe, and David Joseph Gilbert, also a member of the Weather Underground and a fugitive, and then a number of suspects were arrested in the following days. They traced the license plate and descriptions involved in the robbery, murders, and escape attempts led police to a series of apartments evidently used as safe houses mm-hmm. by the gang. Two of the safe houses have been used by Marilyn Jean Buck. She was described as quartermaster of the Black Liberation Army. The apartments were found to contain weapons, ammunition, communications equipment, false document disguises, list of police uh, and identities, and floor plans of area police stations, and radical political literature. The safe Mm -hmm. houses had been abandoned shortly before the police search, but evidence contained in them contributed to the arrest. A lot of trials and convictions and something of note a 38 caliber bullet found in Samuel Smith's pocket after his death was later shown to have come from the gun of one of the police officers killed in the Brinks escape attempt it's an interesting little yeah. find in there so this is from a May 11th 1988 Associated Press article two self-styled revolutionaries were convicted Wednesday so this is now we're going to 1988 mm-hmm. so years have yeah. gone by Members of the gang that carried carried out the 1981 robbery of a Brinks armored truck that left three dead. Federal court in Manhattan found both Matulu Shakur, mm-hmm. Tupac's Tupac stepdad, and Marilyn Jean Buck guilty on all eight counts, racketeering conspiracy, armed robbery, and murder during a bank robbery. They face a sentence of 10 years to life in prison for convictions on two counts of murder while committing robberies, the bank robbery, and racketeering convictions for a maximum of 20 to 25 years. So the charges against... Shakur, 37, Buck, 40, string of robberies, armored truck robberies in New York and Connecticut. You think Connecticut's safe? No. No. It ain't. You'd be wrong. And, of course, the $1.6 million holdup of a Brinks truck Mm -hmm. in Rockland County, which is where Nanuet is. And one guard and two Nyack police officers were killed in the aftermath of that. In addition, they were convicted of a racketeering conspiracy for their part in a gang that called itself The Family. So Judith Clark, she drove a getaway car. Part of the murderous raid on a Brinks armored car in 1981. She had undergone an extraordinary transformation during nearly 35 years in prison, but she wasn't eligible to be considered for parole until 2056, where she'd be 107. And by contrast, the man who's the ringleader of the same robbery and another in Bronx is due to be released on Wednesday from federal prison in California exactly 30 years after he was captured. I don't know why. Hmm. And that man would be Matula Shakur. Stepfather of Tupac Shakur was sentenced in 1980 to 60 years with federal judges' strong recommendation but not requirement that no parole consideration be given until the maximum sentence has been served. Joseph Trombino, who barely escaped, being the fourth one. So he survived Mm -hmm. it. He's a person of note. He was shot in the shoulder. His left arm hung on by a thread. I don't like that. It was sewn back on in three operations. He returned to work as an armed guard two years later. He'd done that for so long, said his wife, Jean. Looked like he didn't know what else to do. Joseph never spoke about the danger 
involving his job. In 1993, he'd been making deliveries to the World Trade Center hours before it was bombed. So he survives the 1981 robbery. Mm -hmm. He's a few hours away from being at the World Trade Center in 1993. Mm -hmm. He was now 68, and he was planning to retire in a year or so. But on Tuesday, he was up at 2.30 a.m. and out by 3.30 a.m. to make it to work in Brooklyn by 5 a.m. A little Mm -hmm. after 9 a.m., he was waiting in the armored truck in the basement of the World Trade Center for his three fellow guards to return from the 11th floor. They made it to safety. Joseph called into Brinks from a payphone, his wife said, to say a policeman had told him to move the truck. The building was shaking and water was cascading down, Joseph said, before the line went dead. And he died in 9-11. Yeah. Many lives. Yeah. Many close calls. But 9-11 was the one that did him in. Yeah, he uh, definitely lived a... Definitely lived an interesting life. It'd be interesting yeah. to, you know, it seemed like somebody who was not one to, you know, make a, whereas some people these days will take the very tiniest thing and make a whole career out of it. Yeah. You know, but nobody he, we know, nobody we know, we wouldn't know. We no. live in Los Angeles. It doesn't happen yeah, here, here, but very um, grounded. You know, this one guard who just, you know, kind of almost like a little final destination, I guess, if I, yeah. had, to, uh, I had to compare it to something. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So what a life. Yeah. Wow. Um, God, I don't want to leave it on that note. Yeah. But, but just remember, this happened really close to where I went to community college. So. <laughs> just remember, Jason did get an education. <laughs> I'm Annie from Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm Johanna from Vienna, Austria. We are the hosts of Fresh Hell, your international podcast that covers murder, mystery, and the macabre throughout history. Are you interested in the 3,569 ways your household could have killed you in the Victorian era? Do you know how malaria and syphilis played a role in the John List family murders? And have you ever wondered what Prince Albert's sex chair had to do with the murder of Stanford White? Okay, nothing. It had nothing to do with it. We're still telling you about it, though. It's a pretty great sex chair. If you're looking for another show that talks about Ted Bundy, this is probably not the podcast for you. But if you're looking for two women that cover lesser-known cases from all over the world with a lot of background information... So much background information that you will rock your local pub quiz from now on. Then find Fresh Hell Podcast on your favorite podcast app. We also have German Cannibals. See you soon. Tschüss.